Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we'll do our second example problem. Using the method of virtual work to calculate deflections and slopes and beams. And in this problem, again, it's a little bit more complicated than example one, but the process or the approach that we're going to take stays the same. And here we've got this cantilever beam fixed at point A, a concentrated force of three kilonewtons applied at point B, and a concentrated moment going counterclockwise applied at point C. And here I, I'm given the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia of the cross section. And what I want to do is find the slope at point B and the deflection at point C. I've written for you over here on the right the principle of virtual or the method of virtual work and basically the two formulations that are used most often uh, when you use the principle of virtual work to calculate deflections and slopes in a beam. And the approach that we're going to take is the same as before. So the process, real quick, is again just to establish a coordinate system for the beam, something I like to do to establish a beginning and an end and define what I considered positive displacements and positive slopes. Uh, draw the internal shear and moment diagrams for the real loading, apply the external virtual unit load, and draw that virtual shear and moment diagram. And then apply the principle of virtual work and integrate and solve for that displacement that we are looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is establish a chord system for my beam structure. Some people like to f skip the step just because it's just, you know, you just want magnitudes of displacements and rotations. I like to, like to have it just so that we can put it in context of everything that we're doing. So here, I'm just going to go pretty standard. I'll put the origin at point A, so I'll have plus positive x going to the right and any positive deflections I will consider upwards. The next thing I want to do is draw the internal shear and moment diagrams of my structure with the real loading. And this involves drawing a free body diagram, using equilibrium equations, solving for reactions, and then drawing the shear and moment diagram. So that process, you know, that used to be like a three or four step process in statics. It is now is really just, you just, it's a sub-step of this larger method of virtual work. So let me go ahead and draw the reactions here at point A. We've got a vertical reaction, a horizontal reaction, AX, and because of the fixed support, I'll put a concentrated or re moment reaction here. And then I'm going to apply the equilibrium equations. And so to do that, let's see, if I do some of the forces in the horizontal, that's just going to tell me that AX equals zero. Sum of the forces in the vertical, positive being upward equal to zero and that tells me a y is equal to three kilonewtons and a y is acting upwards and if I take moments about point a and I say positive moments are going counterclockwise then I would have m a minus three kilonewtons times five meters plus five kilonewton meters equal to zero and that tells me that m a is equal to ten kilonewton meters which means it's 10 kilonewton meters going in the direction that I drew this MA over here, which is counterclockwise. And now I can draw my shear and moment diagrams. So here's my beam with just the re external reactions and loading drawn in. Now I want to draw the shear and moment diagrams. Start at positive 3 kilonewtons, go all the way across because there's no loading in between. My concentrated load. Here, at three kilonewtons, brings it back down to zero, and there you go. My moment starts at negative ten kilonewton meters. I have a constant shear, which means my moment will be linear. I have a positive shear, so that means my moment is going to be increasing during this in this range right here, uh, from zero to five meters. And this area here is equal to 3 times 5, so that's 15 kilonewton meters. And that means I'm going to increase or make a change of positive 15 kilonewton meters over this length of 5 meters. And increasing linearly, that's going to take me to 5 meter, kilonewton meters right here. And so my moment diagram will look like this. And here, because I have no loading inside, no shear, I'm going to have a constant moment that goes straight across. And there we go. And this is plus 5 kilonewton meters. This is what my shear and moment diagrams look like. 
Now the next few steps are going to be focused on calculating the slope at point B of the structure. And that point B was right here. And really that involves these three steps right here. And the first, the well the third thing that we're doing, the third step, is to apply the external virtual unit load on the structure. And that means that we're going to have a cantilever beam again. And what we're going to do here is apply the external virtual unit load at the location that we want to know the deflection and in the direction that we think it is rotating. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to apply a unit moment like this, going counterclockwise. And I like to, t I t usually like to apply my moments or my unit loads counterclockwise. That's just a habit. In fact, it doesn't really matter what direction you think it's going. It's going to correct itself, if you will, later when you do the calculations. And now what we want to do is, ca is draw the, shear, the virtual shear and moment diagrams. So that, again, involves a free body diagram, reactions, and and then going ahead and drawing the diagrams. And I use a prime just to indicate that everything is virtual, if you will. And you know this is a pretty simple structure to analyze. And if I do some of the forces in the vertical, I'll find that AY prime is 0. AX prime from some of the forces in the horizontal is 0. And if I take moments about point A here, I will find that MA prime is equal to negative 1 kilonewton meter. But this negative, this MA prime equal to negative 1 kilonewton meter just means that my moment is 1 kilonewton meter going clockwise, or the opposite of the way I drew it. And I would find this out from my sum of the moments about point A equilibrium equation. And so when I go ahead and draw the shear and moment diagrams, you know, the shear diagram is really trivial and not relevant because there are no shears going on in this beam. It's just in pure bending in segments A, B, if you will, in this segment right here. So my moment diagram looks like this. I'm not even going to draw the shear diagram. And for here, I'm going to go up one kilonewton meter. And then I have no shear, so this is just going to be a pure constant moment all the way to five meters. This is one and one, and this location is five meters. And then everything else is just zero. Now that I have my virtual and my real moment diagrams, I'm ready to apply the principle of virtual work and integrate. And again, the basic premise behind the principle of virtual work is that we have the external virtual work is equal to the internal virtual work. And in this case, because we're looking at slopes, our formulation for the external virtual work is one kilonewton meter, the unit load that we've applied, or the unit moment, times the slope at B, or the magnitude of the slope at B, is equal to the integral over the length of the entire beam, virtual moment, times the internal curvature, or the real curvature, dx. And no matter where you're looking for the displacement, you have to integrate over the entire length of the beam. So some, even though it's not going to matter here, sometimes what people do is because they're looking for the displacement or the rotation at point B, they'll only integrate from 0 to 5. No matter where you're looking for the displacement, you've got to use the total energy in the beam, if you will. 